Um, all right, uh, howdy. Uh, my name is Zach Sundberg. Um, I'm from Stanford University, and uh, I did this work with my advisor, Michael Kokenderfer, at the Stanford Intelligence Systems Lab. Um, so we've already talked about what a POMDP is, so I'm going to just go uh, breeze through this. There's a state space, transition probability distribution, action space, um, a reward. You're trying to maximize the discounted sum of expected discounted sum of future rewards. Um, but you only receive observations. And with that, you can construct a belief. So for example, in this tag problem, um, that's like the yellow is the probability that the target is in that square. Um, by constructing this belief, uh, you can construct uh, an optimal policy that, that will maximize the expected reward and then act based on that. There's two basic ways of doing this. Uh, you can solve it offline where you calculate the value function. That was the first talk in this session. Um, and then you can also do it online by uh, constructing a tree at every time step. And uh, that's what Early just talked about. Um, so constructing this tree is typically done with some variant of Monte Carlo tree search where you uh, find a good sequence of actions through your tree, go down to the bottom, expand a node, run a rollout simulation, and then propagate the results back up. And you maintain an estimate of the Q value for every action node in your tree. Um, another preliminary thing that you need to know about for this talk is the QMDP approximation. So typically in a POMDP, you're trying to maximize the Q value for a given belief. So you pick the action that maximizes for your belief B, uh, Q given the uh, policy that you're going to take. And that is the expected sum of future rewards. Um, you could also consider the QMDP value, which is the Q value for the fully observed MDP that's the basis of your POMDP. And the QMDP approximation for a POMDP is simply setting your Q value for your belief to be the expected MDP Q value uh, given the belief that you're in. And this is always an upper bound for the true optimal Q, and Q value uh, for the POMDP. If you plan based on this, um, it's equivalent to assuming full observability on the next step. And uh, this will not, uh, if you take this plan, it, unfortunately, it's suboptimal because it will not take uh, costly exploration actions. So that's an approximation to keep in mind throughout this. Now, uh, when you're doing Monte Carlo tree search for POMDPs, you're really doing Monte Carlo tree search on the belief space MDP. Um, and early talked about uh, sp spaces with uh, very large action spaces, um, which are hard to handle. Um, very large state spaces are actually not that hard to handle with the current um, techniques. But uh, I'm going to focus on very large observation spaces. So if you just naively did Monte Carlo tree search on the belief MDP, um, each of these yellow things represents a belief distribution. You're updating the belief on every step, and that's computationally very expensive. So people have gotten around that in the past. Um, in particular, POMCP was kind of a breakthrough. It uses single simulations of state histories instead of full belief updates on every step. So instead of propagating the belief through, it just simulates a single state. And then the belief is represented by a collection of unweighted particles in every belief node. But unfortunately, that, won't, that breaks down on con problems with continuous observation spaces. So this is the light-dark problem. Basically, your goal is to take action A at state 0. So if you take action A at state 0, you get a 100 reward. If you take action A anywhere else, you get minus 100 reward. So you better be pretty sure that you're in state 0 to take action A. The states are integers. The uh, transitions are deterministic. But you don't know where you start. And you only get ac accurate observations in this white uh, this light region, and you get very noisy observations in all the other regions. So the optimal policy is actually to go to the light region, localize, then come down and take action A equals zero uh, at the goal. So let's see what happens when we apply POMCP to this. The problem is, since the observation space is continuous, you will sample a new observation node um, every time you build the tree, and the tree will be very wide, infinitely wide, as many iterations as you do wide, but it will only be one layer deep. So that means that the, the algorithm is incapable of uh, making long-term plans. Um, so some other researchers for the fully observable case have 
um, supplied some necessary conditions for consistency. The first one is that each, an infinite number of child nodes must be visited, and, and each node must be visited in an infinite number, an infinite number of times. So they've proposed a way to do this, which is called double progressive widening, and that is limiting the number of children of each node to k into the alpha, where k and alpha are tuning parameters, and n is the number of times the node has been visited. So that will actually guarantee these two things. And we can apply that to POMCP. Um, we get an algorithm called POMCP DPW, but we see that it actually performs exactly the same. Uh, and so we, when we first did this, we were kind of confused about why that is. Um, but it turns out that we can actually prove that POMCP with DPW converges to the QMDP approximation. And the proof goes something like this. We start out with POMCP right here with DPW. This is what we would think it would look like. Um, but first we note that since the observation is continuous, observations that are generated in this tree search are unique with probability one. And we also note that you can only insert a state into an if you're using an unweighted particle filter, you can only uh, insert a state into the particle collection if the observation matches exactly. Um, but this uh, never happens because of one, and that means that there's only ever one state particle in each belief. And so really that means that the belief is just an alias for that fully observable state in this tree search. And that means that this is the same as applying MCTS with DPW to an MDP where the first state, the root node, is a belief, but all others correspond to um, fully observable states. Um, so that means that it will, in fact, converge to QMDP. So we have this uh, algorithm that doesn't work, and we can um, hypothesize a third necessary condition for consistency. So the third condition is an infinite number of particles must be added to each belief node in order for this to be consistent. And we do this by, instead of using an unweighted particle filter, we add weighted particle filters in the standard, the standard way that you would do that for particle filter using the observation distribution Z. Um, so that gives us this algorithm, which we've called POMCPOW, POMCP with observation widening. And as you can see, this one actually finds a good solution. So it gets 59 reward, while these ones get basically negative 20. But there, there are other ways to do this. Um, the first way is just using a particle filter tree with double progressive widening, where you fix the number of particles at n, and we'll see that also works pretty well. And then the other way is to discretize the observation space. So we'll um, divide these up into bins, and then that'll allow you to put unweighted particles um, correctly into these belief nodes. Um, and then another uh, common method, probably the most advanced online solver um, out there right now, is Despot, where we fix a number of scenarios k. So this actually alleviates the widening problem, but as we'll see, it does not uh, this algorithm actually converges to QMDP-like solutions as well. Um, so first we'll look at, this is a widely used benchmark, um, and as you can see, all of the solvers except vanilla POM CP do pretty well on that. Um, but once we go to this problem that I just described to you, um, you actually see that POM CP, DPW, DESPOT, um, and DESPOT both uh, converge to the exact QMDP solution. So since the, the, um, these denote whether the state uh, action and observation space are discrete or continuous, so since the state and action space are discrete for this problem, we can actually calculate the exact QMDP solution, and as expected, uh, DESPA and POMCP DPW converge to that, while our new algorithms, POMCPOW and PFT with DPW do not. Um, but since the observation space is only one-dimensional, we can discretize it. These little superscript Ds mean that we've discretized it, and that also works. But if we go to an eight-dimensional observation space in this uh, problem where you're trying to find a submarine, uh, there is no discretization where that will work. And um, PFT and POMC power are needed to solve this problem well. Um, just to make sure that I did my due diligence, we tried all of the discretization bin sizes in this range. So for light dark, you can see that POMCP works in this region, but doesn't work in this region. Um, and then DESPOT is the opposite way, which is kind of interesting in itself. But for the subhunt problem, there's no discretization that we can use. Um, this VDP tag problem is a problem where all the state action and observation space are continuous, and there POMCPOW and PFT DPW 
uh, do the best in that one. And now I'll, I'll talk about a, a more realistic problem. So um, we do a lot of work on autonomous driving. Um, and our, one of our hypotheses is, or hypotheses is that um, planning with internal states, so taking into account not only the external physical states that we can measure, but the internal states um, will help us do better with driving. Um, we're using a lane change. I'll skip that video. Um, we're using a lane change uh, situation to test this. And our model for human behavior is the IDM and mobile model, where these parameters are the unknown states. We have timid, normal, and aggressive values. And we can formulate that as a PalmDP, where um, the state can s includes all the physical states of the, every car on the road and also the internal states of other cars, but the observation is only the physical state. So the, these uh, internal states are only partially observable, and we can only observe them through the actions of other cars. The, our action space includes 10 actions, and our reward function um, has safety and efficiency terms. We also uh, use some reachability analysis to guarantee that there are no crashes, but we consider hard-breaking actions unsafe. So here's what that looks like. Um, in this uh, video, the green car is our vehicle. The other cars are color coded according to their true aggressiveness, which is an internal parameter that we can't uh, measure. And then these lines coming off of them are predictions of what they're going to do based on their aggressiveness. So if this guy is aggressive, he's going to change lanes and go this way. If he's timid, he's going to slow down and go that way. Um, and as you can see, this timid guy in the left lane is slowing everybody down. He's kind of, I think people would be mad at him. Um, but uh, so as you can see, as the time goes, we get more and more confident in our predictions of what the other cars are going to do based on their past actions. And we can actually complete this lane change. Um, the, the goal is to do the lane change within 1,000 meters. And so we make it over there. Um, so on this problem, you can see the PFT the particle filter trees with the fixed number of particles actually doesn't work that well because it's pretty inefficient to propagate all those particles out to the end. Um, whereas Palm C Pow does better. And actually, you can see DESPA does the best. And that is because in this problem, the QMDP approximation is actually really good. And DESPA does a good job of planning far into the future. Um, so overall, Palm C Pow does. Um, or Palm C Pal only does the best in one of these problems, the VDP tag problem, but it does well in all of them. So we think that it's a good general purpose algorithm and at least a baseline um, for continuous uh, problems that we can start using. I think the main takeaway from this talk, I forgot to put a conclusion slide in, but the main takeaway is that all um, previous uh, popular algorithms out there for online Palm DPs actually fail when the obs can fail when the observation is continuous and you need to do uh, exploring. And so we've empirically demonstrated that these new algorithms are able to break that barrier. And for realistic problems, uh, Palm C Pow does better than um, PFT. Uh, we implemented all these in our palmdps.jl interface. You can go uh, and try that. It's pretty simple to use. Um, this may load. Yeah, so problem definition looks like this. It's like 40 lines. Uh, right there, and then visualization like this. And when you when you run it, you get these nice trees that you can explore and see, you know, what's actually going on and everything. Um, so you can actually see Palm C Palm C P when you actually run it. You can see what we predicted with the wide trees. Uh, if you go here. Uh, yeah, that's infinitely expanded, so it's it's exactly what we would expect. Anyways, uh, I'm trying to go. So I'd like to thank my sponsors, uh, Toyota Research Institute. And if you want to find out more, you can go to my website, ZacharySundberg.net. So thank you. <laughs>
Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I guess I should have qualified that more. Um, yeah, I think there are probably, there definitely are adaptive techniques out there that they've tried. Um, and uh, I think that you could have success on a lot of problems with those. Um, but uh, I would say it's a lot easier to use one of these uh, off the bat. And this, this, in a sense, does do a kind of clustering because it actually, um, with the observation weight, it uses the observation weight to put states that are not exactly aligned with the observation into, um, into that belief with proportion to how likely that observation was. So it kind of, in a sense, it kind of does that so clustering for you. Thing. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, any more questions? Okay, time for lunch. Thank you very much. Thank you.